When you think of cemetery tombstones, something like these probably come to mind. Most people don't reflect on how funerals and burials should be done. They just do it the way it's always been done. The way it is done varies by times and locations. The oldest known intentional burial in the ground was about 100,000 years ago with the grave of Kafsa in Israel. It was a group tomb for 15 people. It was buried in a cave with 71 pieces of red ochre and ochre stained ritual artifacts. The earliest grave in Europe is that of the Red Lady of Wales, which is 29,000 years old. The ancient German cemetery called Gross Friedenwald is the oldest true cemetery in Europe with graves dating back almost 8,500 years. Mesopotamian royal burials began in 5000 BCE in tombs and graves cut into the ground. Common people were buried below the family home or next to it with a carving of the person and their name on a stone. Corns, which are stacks of rocks, were used in Saudi Arabia about 9,000 years ago as burial monuments. The earliest tombs in China were from 4700 to 2900 BCE. Continued the existence of ancestors in the afterlife is a must. Rituals, property, prayers, and a proper burial is considered most important in allowing the dead to rest in peace and prevent haunting by an angry ghost. In an unpopular move in February 2020, authorities banned burials and funerals to prevent the spread of COVID-19. All coronavirus fatalities had to be cremated. Newgrange in Ireland's ancient east dates to 3200 BCE. This passage tomb is an enormous kidney-shaped mound surrounded by 200,000 tons of rock. Each stone fits together perfectly to be a mortarless, watertight feat of engineering. Scotland and Ireland both built corns, dolmens, and passage graves to house their dead. Corns date to 4000 BCE. 2000 BCE dead were put in wooden coffins along with personal possessions. Bones of dogs and oxen have been found buried with the dead. These are some examples of corns in England, Scotland, and Mount Holly Cemetery in Little Rock, Arkansas high on a hill overlooking Pakistan's Swat Valley, we find bones in 32 sealed graves dating to 3,000 years ago, and hairpins, spindles, pots, and ornaments made mostly of copper and bronze. Starting around 3000 BCE, ancient Greece buried underground since they believed the afterlife existed underground. Carved stones were to remind the living it was their duty to continue to honor the deceased. Starting around 2600 BCE, Egyptians mummified pharaohs, nobility, and officials and their pets and buried them in elaborate tombs. Mummification removed all organs except the heart. The gods were to weigh the heart. It took a priest knowledgeable in anatomy about 70 days to accomplish the process. Because of the cost, common Egyptians would be buried in an earthen grave with grave goods and as many Shabti dolls as a family could afford. Egyptian pyramids were built about 20 miles south of Cairo. Pharaohs wanted to be remembered buried in such an impressive structure but pyramids were easy to spot by tomb raiders. Artisans were sworn to secrecy when they later built hidden tombs for pharaohs in the protected valley at Giza. Once entombed, the site was sealed and covered over with stones and sand. The Sacred Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. From 1200 BCE to 70 CE, the Jewish buried their dead in caves. 150,000 graves have accumulated in the past 3,200 years. It is a Jewish tradition for mourners to leave a rock when visiting a grave. The first Mayan cities developed around 750 
BCE, Mayan rulers had extravagant tombs in pyramids filled with pottery, masks, food, and other goods. They believed dead had to go through the terrifying underworld of demons to get to paradise. Maze was placed in the mouths of buried persons for the soul's journey. Cremated ashes were put in pots or idols. Families brought food on holidays. Ancient Maya associated red cinnabar with sacred blood. Corpses were sprinkled with shavings of the mineral and wrapped in cotton. In India, in Buddha's day, from 563 to 483 BCE, corpses were exposed to birds. In later years, dead persons of distinction were burned on a pyre. A memorial shrine was placed over their ashes. It became the usual practice for most people. Their ashes were strewn on the Ganges River, considered the source of all life. Each night, one can see men carrying large bundles of sticks on their heads for burning of the dead. The ancient practice of the widow throwing herself on her husband's pyre and burning with him has been outlawed. Some elderly choose to have themselves rowed out into the middle of the Ganges where they fling themselves into the sacred water and are swept away. A richly furnished Celtic burial chamber found in Germany dates from about 530 BCE. It measures 20 feet in height and about 200 feet in diameter. A six foot two inch man about 40 years of age was laid out on a nine foot bronze recliner. He was buried with jewelry, a hat, weapons, and personal items. There was a large cauldron with three lions around the rim, originally filled with a hundred gallons of mead. There were also bronze dishes and drinking horns. The Catacombs of Rome. In the second through fifth century, Christians and Jews used abandoned stone mine catacombs for burial. Corpses were wrapped in a sheet and placed in niches. A Christian symbol and the person's name was carved on marble or clay ceiling slab. Catacombs were used by early Christians because they didn't agree with pagan cremation. There was a lack of space and land was expensive. In Rome, there are hundreds of kilometers of underground passages in more than 60 catacombs. Pagan Roman burial customs from the Roman Empire, 27 BCE to 476 CE. To prevent disruption to daily activities of the city, a funeral procession began at night in Rome and ended at the cemetery. The corpse was burned and the ashes gathered in an urn or put in a tomb. Proper traditional burial was so important that funeral societies were paid dues to oversee funeral rites so that the dead didn't return as ghosts. A coin was placed in the mouth of the deceased to pay for the passage across the underground river Styx. The Roman Emperor Constantine the Great ended persecution for Christianity in 313 CE. It would eventually become the empire's state religion. Christian religious symbols in cemeteries started being used. It is worthy of note that mass graves were used for epidemics or groups of war dead. When a grave needed to be reused due to lack of space, the previous occupant's bones were removed. They were taken to a bone house on the grounds of the cemetery. Wadi al Salam Cemetery in the Peace Valley in Iraq. 1,400 years of burial of Shiite Muslims have amounted to several million graves in almost 1,500 acres of cemetery. Their first imam, a cousin and son in law of the Prophet Muhammad, is buried there. Medieval cemeteries exist. Many are not apparent, however. For example, in 2006, a site in London was redeveloped into Bermondsey Square with living spaces, restaurants, stores, and a public space for antiques and farmers markets. The known history is Pope Constantine granted privileges to a monastery. Burials happened at the monastery from 708 to 715. Viking invasions took the property in the 9th century. In 1082, it again became a monastery under French control. In 1390, it became the English 
Bermondsey Abbey. It was dissolved in 1537 by Henry VIII. Sir Thomas broke up the abbey and built a mansion. Parts of Bermondsey Abbey remain visible today. The remains of the southwestern tower of the Abbey Church can be seen below the glass floor of a bar and grill. Houses nearby incorporate some of the Abbey's remains. Signs noting the history of the area are on the sides of buildings. Paris Catacombs. In the late 1700s, city cemeteries in Paris caused major public health problems. From 1777 to 1814, bones were transferred from tombs and graves to abandoned stone quarries located outside the city. It was done at night to avoid hostile reactions from the church and the Parisian population. The 174 miles of catacombs with remains of six million Parisians was deemed dangerous and made illegal to visit in 1955. In 2013, a small portion was opened to the public as part of a museum. In Eastern Europe, a site exists where loved ones were buried in 99 tombs and crypts along with their clothes and belongings. Local legends say a deadly plague swept through Ossetia in the 18th century. Clans built quarantine houses for sick family members. They were provided with food, but confined until death claimed their lives. In a small Romanian village, Mary Cemetery has folk art monuments. Bright blue wooden crosses have cheery pictures and darkly humorous words about the deceased. Wood was a popular material in the 17 and 1800s. Some markers could be very ornate. Few survived beyond 50 to 100 years. The ones pictured were collected and stored in a church in Norway. The graves in Norway are owned by the local municipalities and administered by the parish office. Even though a family may buy grave plots, the family must annually rent the grave place. It is the honor of the oldest son to pay. If payment ceases, the stone is moved to a special part of the cemetery. The land is reused for someone else. Perhaps this explains the wooden style markers being taken from graves and stored inside a church. Our Lady of Almedina Cemetery is in the city of Madrid. It is one of the largest cemeteries in Western Europe. It has been the main cemetery for the entire city from 1884 to 1973 and is estimated to have 5 million graves. The oldest cemetery in Spain is an English non-Catholic Christian cemetery built in 1831. Highgate Cemetery opened in London in 1839 as an elegant Victorian cemetery and nature reserve with shaded paths among the tombs. There are notable occupants like Karl Marx, scientist Michael Faraday, and the Charles Dickens family. A graveyard is a type of cemetery. A cemetery is not usually a graveyard. By the seventh century, the process of burial was done by the Christian church and only allowed in the lands near a church in the churchyard. The part of the churchyard used for burial was called a graveyard. The word grave comes from the German word to dig. By 1800s, church burial plots were full. New places away from the churches were called cemeteries from the old French word meaning a sleeping place. In traditional Christian burial, the graves face east. Christ's second coming is supposed to be in Jerusalem, which is east of Europe and the Americas. Two of the oldest U.S. cemeteries are in Massachusetts, close to where the pilgrims landed. Two pilgrims out of 104 died on the trip across the Atlantic. The first winter, 45 more died. There was no time for mourning like the burials in Europe. The bodies were carried to Coles Hill, put in graves and sandy soil on the banks of the shore. They leveled the earth and planted over it as soon as it was possible to conceal the extent of the dead from the natives. In New Orleans, burial is done in above ground tombs. This style was prevalent in the stony Mediterranean region thousands of years ago 
and was introduced to New Orleans and other New World colonies by the French and Spanish. This worked well for New Orleans with its high water table. After a body is interred, it is left undisturbed in the tomb for a period of 366 days. The remains are then pushed to the back and placed under a shelf in the tomb. Names and dates are added to the door of the tomb. St. Louis Cemetery is the oldest and is actually three cemeteries. In 1789, the first opened outside the city, which is now in the French Quarter. Number two and number three were established farther out as the city grew. Nicholas Cage has purchased a new pyramid-shaped tomb at St. Louis Cemetery Number no. 1 for his eventual interment. Each of the New Orleans cemeteries are surrounded by a perimeter of wall oven vaults meant for an entire family. Wealthy people are sometimes buried in mausoleums. Though many cities have a graveyard named Boot Hill, the first was at Hayes, Kansas in 1867, which was five years before the founding of Dodge City, Kansas. Most occupants are cowboys who died in a violent manner with their boots on. Are these zombie-proof graves? No, this prevented body snatchers digging up bodies and selling them to medical schools for research. Here we have tent graves from the 1800s to the mid-1900s found with angled concrete slabs in Kentucky, Middle Tennessee, and northern parts of Arkansas, Alabama, and Georgia. Dating from the Middle Ages, Christians were often buried inside the church floor. Records were kept by church clerks. Most of the common customs in the West come from the Catholic traditions, the city of Rome. Important people were buried inside churches, especially in Europe, a ledger stone was placed to cover the top of the grave. Common people were usually buried in the ground with some sort of stone marker. Native Americans from 1000 to 200 BCE built burial mounds. Others exposed their dead to the elements so the spirits could be released. Remains were buried afterwards. Sometimes dead were placed in large earthenware jars and buried. As Indians and Aleuts were converted to Christianity, cemetery burial became far more common. The Florence Indian Burial Mound is the largest in the Tennessee River Valley with a height of 43 feet. Old Indian Burial Ground, Bay Mills, Michigan. Wooden spirit houses are placed over graves. Besides protecting the grave, they held tools and resources that the dead would need to sustain them on their trip to the land of the spirits. Trees, shrubs, and flowers which come back to life annually are often planted on and around graves or cremation ashes. Style of monuments change with time. Here's horses in an 11th century Swedish gravestone. Tools indicate 18th century. During the 18th century, markers usually of sandstone were often decorated with death designs such as winged skulls, winged cherub heads, heavenly crowns, or grave digger picks and shovels. In the 19th century, it ranged from highly decorated to plain. Often with crosses, popular designs were shifting from symbols of death to urns and willow trees. Marble also became popular as a grave material during the 1800s in the United States. Today, granite is used the most. Migration played a part in design. In Canada, here's a stone with English and with the indigenous language. English names and dates with scripture in native tongue of the family. In 1854, cholera was found to occur in places with contaminated water. Five years later, Chicago prohibited new graves by Lake Michigan because you would hit water within four feet of digging. Many graves were moved to places like the new Rose Hill Cemetery. According to legend, the land for Rose Hill Cemetery was donated by a farmer named Hiram Rowe. He refused to sell his land to the city until he was promised that the cemetery would be named in his honor. The name Rose Hill became Rose Hill due to a city clerk's error.
and this is quite an entrance to Rose Hill Cemetery in Chicago. A teenage mother and 10-month-old daughter both died in March and May of 1854. The distraught father ordered this monument. The glass cover was put on later for protection from the elements. Harry May's dramatic memorial to his wife of only four years, she was almost 20, in sweet and loving remembrance of my wife, Maddie M. May. She was an ideal woman and model wife. One of the most moving stones is called the Angel of Grief, weeping over the dismantled altar of life. It was created by the American sculptor William Wetmore Story in 1894 for the grave of his wife, Emmeline, who is buried in Rome. Replicas abound, including one in Little Rock. You can currently order one for $13,500 plus $1,700 shipping. This is a statue to Lulu E. Fellows, died 1883, aged 16 years. Many hopes lie buried here. Here we see monuments dedicated to lost children. Lovely women who were lost. The first woman from Savannah to compete in the Boston Marathon is still running. Gravestones of couples. George S. Bangs was a United States Postal Service official while serving as General Superintendent of the Railway Mail Service during the administration of President U.S. Grant. He developed the railroad mail car and the concept of fast mail, improving mail service from several weeks to several days. Military, civic, and political monuments among gravestones. A Civil War Cannon. A horse statue stands in a small courtyard adjacent to the U.S. Cavalry Museum at Fort Riley, Kansas. The inscription reads, in memory to the one and one half million horses and mules of the Union and Confederate armies who were killed, wounded, or died from disease in the Civil War. That was over twice as many animals as men. This memorial, Our Heroes, was designed by sculptor Leonard Volk completed in 1870 for Civil War heroes. In Arlington, Massachusetts, we find this stone. Near this spot, Samuel Whitmore, then 80 years old, killed three British soldiers. He was shot, bayoneted, beaten, and left for dead, but recovered and lived to be 98 years of age. Here's an obelisk monument for Mayor Long John Wentworth who was an Illinois politician and mayor of Chicago during the Civil War. Passionate displays of war dead loss. This is the Angel for the Fallen in Missoula, Montana, a Vietnam War Memorial. This other stone is WW1 Soldier. This soldier died at Camp Logan in Houston, Texas in January 1919 from the Spanish flu pandemic. This bench is a 1918 Spanish flu memorial. Killed more Americans than all the combat war deaths in the 20th century. Woodman of the World is one of the first fraternal benefit societies in the United States Founded in 1890, men formed lodges of social safety nets for widows and children. They looked after the family should one of them die. 
This system became a private insurance fund for members. The lodges erected log-shaped gravestones. The program stopped in the late 1920s as the cost of elaborate carvings rose. Early stones might resemble one of these. Or these. Artistic gravestone carvers sometimes got carried away with their designs. Even though the insurance company no longer furnished the stones, people still had stump stones carved. Large tree stump monuments are found in the Thomas Cemetery in North Little Rock's Levy area. This is Jesus in cowboy boots. Willett Babcock of Paris, Texas ordered himself an impressive memorial before he died in 1881. Shortly after the Civil War, a joint headstone was erected by a man who quickly lost two wives in a row. Seventy years passed when a groundskeeper claimed to have solved this cryptic headstone. He died without sharing the answer. Over a hundred years later, a lady in her 90s cracked the code. She started at the top left corner, counted seven right and seven down, then using a haphazard zigzag, she was able to read the message. And here is the message to his two wives. Slipping out of the shroud and casket. Jules Verne breaking out of his own tombstone. The sculptor used his actual death mask. Are chairs begging for you to visit often? Paul Tully worked for the Democratic National Committee, died in the hotel in Little Rock, Arkansas, September 1992. He was working to get Clinton elected as president. His grave marker has a wooden work chair and coffee to share with a friend, with a folded copy of the New York Times less than two months later announcing the election of Clinton. Symbolic chain links. Links heaven and earth. These are eight links for eight children. In 1915, a show train collided with a stronger steel passenger train, injuring at least 50. So they put up a big top shaped stone. In 1959, a two year old squirrel monkey named Miss Baker was the first successful primate to go into space. When she died at 27, she was buried at the U.S. Space Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Oddly shaped memorials. This desk marks the family site. Stringed instruments for musicians. Oddly shaped memorials. Taking a smoke break. Theodore Sue Skeisel was born in Springfield, Massachusetts. The six million or so that the town has spent on monuments attest to the fact that Dr. Seuss is beloved. The famous often have interesting headstones. Mill Blank, that's all folks. Merv Griffin, I will not be right back after this message. Billy Wilder, I'm a writer, but then nobody's perfect. Rodney Dangerfield, there goes the neighborhood. Dean Martin, everybody loves somebody sometime. Sometimes it's what they say. I told you I was sick. Ma loves Pa, Pa loves women. Ma cut Pa with two in swimming. Here lies Pa. The first one says, if you can read this, you're standing on my boobs. I was hoping for a pyramid. Life sucks and then you die. Damn, it's dark down here. Taylor was the real thing. Here lies the best damn moonshiner that ever lived. Five dollar palm reading. I knew this would happen. Jesus called and Kim answered. Technology is passing these phone lovers by. 
one way, do not enter. And I was supposed to live to be 102 and be shot by a jealous husband. Here I lie, but don't you cry, for one day, too, you will die. Dr. Tyler says the doctor will see you soon. Uncle Walter loved to spend. He had no money in the end. But with many a whiskey and many a wife, he really did enjoy his life. Well, this sucks. Here lies George Johnson, hanged by mistake, 1882. He was right, we was wrong but we strung him up and now he's gone. Now I know something you don't. I made some good deals and I made some bad ones. I really went in the hole with this one. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. My loss, but your gain. At last, a hole in one. And sometimes it's just the name. Baby Monster, William be back. Fail, Speeda E. Bump, Minnie Cooper, Oh No, Charlie Loser, Another Loser, Rosa Loose Butts, I'm a Hog, and I know that one's in Texas. Worst Names, Worst, Satan, Virgin, Batman, I Be Horny, Spanks, Hoes, Sluts, Butt, Teats, Boner, Pancake, Fender, Death Rage, Stiff. Sometimes it's the proximity to another stone. Mr. Burger and Mr. Fries really do have tombstones near each other in Fort Collins, Colorado. Some more odd tombstones. This one has an expired parking meter. Her humor lives on. This grave in New Mexico is a functioning putting green. There's a putter laying on the grave, and the urn is full of golf balls. She finally gave us her recipe. There's Mom's Christmas cookies and Kay's fudge. And that's all, folks.